Fastby, and this is what you need to know about catatonia and autism. I've been promising you for a while that we're going to talk about strategies to use if you know that someone has catatonia and autism, um, but I wanted to talk about a strategy that comes right before that, and that is remembering how important it is to be aware of the high rate of catatonia and autism. Remember that it, the best estimate in the United States is 18%. And I cheat a little bit and I round that up to um, one out of five, uh, to about 20%. Um, to help me to keep in mind that I'm, if I'm working with five individuals on the spectrum, that it is very likely that one of them is also going to have catatonia. And especially um, if you're working with someone at adolescence or older, then the risk is, is, is real. Um, and it can happen earlier. I don't want to, for you to rule that out in your mind, but certainly the highest risk begins around adolescence. Um, so if you see a change in behaviors, if you see someone who seems to be regressing in some areas, someone who suddenly seems to be stuck physically to who experiences dehydration, who stops eating when they had a period of time where they um, ate uh, normally. Um, if you see someone who needs more prompts uh, in order to get things done than they ever needed before. If you see them uh, be have periods of time where they seem frozen or periods of time where they seem overactive or do destructive behaviors that are uncharacteristic of anything that you've seen before, then remember to ask yourself, could this be catatonia? And um, if that's a possibility, then you need to follow up on that.